Welcome back to Sonic Adventure. In this part, the level that we're starting with is Ice Cap. Not to be confused with Ice Cap Zone, which was a zone featured in Sonic 3. This is a very different level. Although it does include some of the same, you know, things in it, such as ice being the very obvious thing, and something that we're going to be doing at the end of a level that was at the beginning of the level in Sonic 3 and Knuckles. And right here I'm trying to abuse physics as I said before, which is a very fun thing. Well at least I think it's a fun thing, you might not, but whatever. I am going to use the spin dash to give me a ton of speed, and then jump to get to this area of the level that basically takes you to the proverbial act 2. If you didn't do that, you'd have to jump on a bunch of panels, like the ones that we saw previously, where the fairy was like, jump from panel 1 to 2 to 3, and, well, that's a bit more boring than doing my super awesome speedrun pro strats, so I decided to do my pro strats instead. Those icicles there are no big deal, but they're kind of a nuisance. It takes a bit to go around them, and then you know, jump off, but I don't think they fall or anything like that, so you have plenty of time to do so. It looks like these ones do, because the texture on the bottom part looks like it could slide off of the top part, but no, the stalactites stay no matter what you do. At least I think they do. I haven't stood on them long enough. Well, that is very nice advice. These bits actually do fall, and it is a bit difficult to walk on them because it is such a skinny area and Sonic likes to run around and go crazy fast. Use the panel to jump. It may this is guide your way. the fourth time that we've had to do that and they still feel the need to repeat to us that we have to, you know, press the jump button on the panels. But we're through with that part. Now we're getting into the real fun bit even though it's pretty much an area that you can't die in, at least I haven't. I don't think the avalanche outright kills you, but we get to do snowboards. So, in Sonic 3, there was a snowboarding bit at the beginning of the stage, but you really couldn't control it. I think all you could do is jump, and Sonic pretty much did the rest on his own. In this though, you have full control of Sonic. He's going forward constantly. Well, I guess that's not full control then. But he's moving forward all the time. You can move left to right, try to dodge these icicles. They don't really hurt you. But the best part about it is what I like about Sonic. By which I mean to say that you can try and act all stylish when doing things. So there's these gold ramps that you could jump off of and do special tricks if you jump at the right time. If you're going fast enough, and if you press the jump button pretty much at the end of the uh, of the ramp, you'll do a cool trick, and it'll give you a ton of extra air, allowing you to get to areas that you probably couldn't get to before. There are some enemies that kind of appear, but those explosions definitely are not going to hit you, so don't mind them. This is a part where you just kind of have fun, you know? You just go fast and enjoy blasting through with sonic speed. This is probably my favorite bit right here, with the hot air balloons around, adding a little bit of color, and also a couple of consecutive ramps where you're pretty much doing a few tricks in a row. Even though I'm pretty sure I timed those correctly, Sonic only did the, the, the method grab. I guess that's what it's called. I don't know, I got that from Kingdom Hearts 2. But now we got another Chaos Emerald, and we're pretty even with Eggman. He has two, so Chaos probably ate a second one. Yeah, and now we have two. Something else that I didn't talk about was the fact that it says level C when I beat a stage. In this game, score doesn't really matter. There isn't any kind of ranking system or anything like that. 
When it says you've completed a level C mission, that basically means you completed the story version of that mission. There's also level B and level A missions. As an example for Sonic, level B is collect a bunch of rings and get to the goal, and level A is get to the goal under a certain amount of time. Those can't be done in the, you know, your first time going through the stage. You have to go to the trial mode in order to do that. But now we've met up with Knuckles, and we have his amazing song, Unknown from M.E. playing in the background. Too bad it doesn't play during this fight. The, the, the character fights in this game are some of the easiest things ever. You can literally spam the A button and you won't lose. And of course we get the memes of Knuckles saying oh no as he gets hit. But he knocked the emeralds out of us even though he didn't hit us. And now Eggman has them. For some reason, he tractor beams the emeralds into his, like, ship thing, his egomatic as I called it before. And then they just suddenly appear in his hands. You know, Sonic Team, I need this explained. But, now he has four emeralds. That also means that Chaos, by extension, has four emeralds. And thus, Chaos gets a bit stronger. And Knuckles is... Knuckles isn't exactly the brightest character. In terms of previous games, he... Got tricked by Eggman in Sonic 3. Pretty much... He tried to stop Sonic, even though Sonic was the good guy, but he didn't realize that Sonic was the good guy, because Eggman told him otherwise. I guess I didn't really go into Tails' backstory either, but we'll get into it during the Tails playthrough, I suppose. He does kind of go into it, but now Chaos is all weird looking, he doesn't even have legs anymore. And we have a boss fight with Chaos 4. We kind of skipped over... 1 through 5, but you only fight the even-numbered chaoses during the, uh, the campaigns of each character. There's no 2, I mean, not, there is a 2, but that's, the, that's later. Spoilers. There's no 1, there's no 3, we don't even see a model for Chaos 3. I don't think we see a model for Chaos 5 either. And Chaos 7 is pretty much him getting all the Chaos Emeralds. And we can't have that. This fight, you're on a bunch of lily pads to get some good ground. If you're not on the lily pads, you'll sink slowly into the water if you're not jumping. And if you sink far enough, you'll take damage. It's not an instant kill. You won't drown or anything like that. And you can jump off of this water for some reason. There's no sort of sinking to the bottom, which is weird, but whatever. For the sake of the fight, I suppose it makes sense. Like in terms of gameplay, not actual real world physics. Even though Sonic has run on water before, he's definitely not gaining enough speed to actually run on this water. Maybe he's just Jesus. Chaos 4 isn't that hard. What he'll try to do is he'll knock down the lily pads that you're standing on. He'll send out shock waves. There's a couple kinds he has. He has some water shock waves which knock down the platforms. And he has this big fiery red shock wave that will actually damage you if you come into contact with it. He also has this attack where the Chaos Emeralds kind of fly out of him. And he attacks you in the form of four watery spheres. He'll also try to knock down the uh, lily pads himself by pretty much ramming into them. But again, since pretty much everywhere is stable ground, it doesn't really matter. And with this last hit, the boss is pretty much done. I had the uh, light speed dash charge there for pretty much no reason. I just like the fact that it makes Sonic even more blue than he already is. Also, if you use it, like, without there being a trail of rings nearby, basically let go of the action button. You know, don't keep, don't do just, you know, half 
action button presses. Basically, you'll do a short dash forward. Which might be nice, but the thing is, as you're holding the, uh, the, the light speed dash, you don't run very fast. You go at a pretty slow pace, so there's not really any reason to hold it. Now that Eggman has left with Chaos 4, we have no choice but to chase him in our plane. This plane being different from the one that Tails took before, the gray one that was a prototype they used a Chaos Emerald. This one is actually Sonic's plane. I'm not sure if he built it or anything. He, I guess he did because he calls it his plane. It's the Tornado. And now he can play with Knuckles. Thus, we get a trophy, if it would appear. You can also kind of talk to Knuckles here. I think he's like the only character that you can talk to. Well, not the only one, but in terms of characters that you talk to normally, NPCs, they don't have voice acting. If you're talking to a character that you can also play as, they will have voice acting. Considering what's being set up here, that was pretty fast. Tails has this weird contraption going on where he makes this launching pad come out of nowhere from inside his house. And I've been inside his house. I know that inside there, there's no buttons or anything like that to press that would make that happen. At least, there aren't any that I see. Also, the tornado has Tails' as Tails all over it. This is Sonic's plane. It even says Sonic on the side. And the sprite is, you know, reflected in the 2D game, so it says Sinos instead. That out of the way, though. We're not talking aesthetics anymore. This is Sky Chase, a sub-act, which is... short. Well, not really short, but... It essentially means the same thing as minigame, I suppose. In this, you have to shoot down all the, uh, the enemies that come around. They will try to shoot you. The tornado does have health. I think it can take five hits before it goes down. It's kind of hard to hit enemies. At least I find it is. But it's also hard for enemies to hit you. They're not going to be hitting very often. There's this reticle that appears. I'm not sure how useful it is when it comes to actually shooting things. Like, it appears slightly next to the tornado, you'd think that the tornado would shoot straight ahead, but no. The reticle is more so for homing shots. If it goes above an enemy, in terms of like, layers on the screen, like, I don't know how to explain it, but basically if it goes over an enemy, then there will be a reticle on that enemy and they'll shoot homing lasers at it. It's not really useful, especially when it came to me recording this. Well, that, that looks like a lot more than five hits when it comes to the tornado. When it came to recording this, using the homing shot wasn't very useful because there's a sound cue that occurs when the homing shot actually targets something. It's this high-pitched noise, you might have heard it before. But the thing is, I'm playing with the sound coming from my capture device, so the sound is very delayed, and I don't know if I'm homed in on anything or not. The mission isn't too hard though. Surviving is not that big of a deal. Getting high points might be, but again, I'm not playing for points. And I think you do get a get an emblem at the end of this. You might get another one for like beating a certain score or something like that. I haven't collected all the emblems. I think you might get like a metal Sonic skin for Sonic, but that's about it. We did it. Go, and that's the end of the act, the sub act. Except for the bit where. Eggman kind of shoots this giant mega laser at us and hits our wing. Tails do a barrel roll. Wrong direction. Okay. 
we're going down. I hit 42% of the enemies. That's pretty abysmal. Although, I do have my excuse that I used earlier. Now, we're back in Station Square, and we have this very bad, very, very bad sound clip playing that honestly makes the scene even more hilarious, because if you saw Sonic falling, he was basically running in place, kind of scuttle jumping like Luigi as he fell, which I find very funny. And this also starts the trend of Sonic, you know, falling into something with his head pretty much buried in the ground. Or falling from the sky in general that happens in a lot of games. Oh, I wonder if he's okay. Next time, we'll, I guess, go search for Tails.